Welcome back to weekly My Hero Academia Anxiety Hour. Aizawa losing his quirk still hurts. Thanks for the warning, Ryukyu. Oh, don't tell me he hit his cell phone or something. I'll be rational. Oh no! <gasps> do what I must. Oh my god! I'm in shock. I did not expect that. I mean, is it weird to say I'm relieved? Man, the dedication, just doing what needs to be done. I had went down this whole road of like speculating and like fan theorizing that with his quirk on, it gave more credibility to using Eri or something like that to go back and get his powers back along with Mirio's powers, which made me super excited to think about. Not that that's off the table right now, but just the opening, opening seconds of this episode completely throwing out that theory or like weakening it greatly. No hesitation. I mean, is he still going to be able to focus? Like he's not going to need normal heroes one water powers to keep his eyes moist. That was insane. What a start. What a dramatic start to the episode. Usually it's like recap, but nope. Clean cut. You're such a badass, you <laughs> Yeah, even Shigaraki respects. And he is. He is a badass. This oh, we're not out of the woods yet. No, 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 no. There you go. Oh my god. He there he is! I've been waiting for him to show up this whole time. Oh, Deku's pissed off. Stay alive. Yeah, Deku's everyone. Everyone. You're just delaying the inevitable. I I'm so glad his powers are not gone, because I just love Aizawa. I'm like a huge Aizawa fanboy, but it's still not a great situation. Todoroki just put himself on the map, too. I feel like by the end of this, Shigaraki will know all of their names. Midoriya and Bakugo aren't responding. And now I can't reach Todoroki. This has got to be super frustrating. Right, a lot of people don't know yet. Even watching the news, they don't know. Giant villain is currently moving north from Mount Gunga in Wakayama. I feel like she's going to be super important, this arc. Almost every hero in Japan is on this mission. There's nobody left to stop him. Except for the kids. It was always going to go that way. And the kids have a lot less support. There's no floor, ceiling. Everyone above them is kind of not gone, but definitely humbled, kind of crippled. We had little time. We prepared meticulously, and Kirishima managed to administer a dose. It wasn't much though, kind of a small dose. Maybe it just is time delayed. The reason we're even alive is because they didn't consider us to be actual threats. Oof. You did the right thing today, kids. Your decisions were stopped. So, Gigantomaki just passed them right over? What happens now? You should be proud of that fact! He got them out and saved them, probably. And what about the heroes and their big raid? Was this mission something they should have done? This is... Well, they're having a... Like, okay. really this bad. is a crisis. Yeah, it's really bad, Vedetta. Do you think we were doomed to fail from the very beginning? This is such a human response, it's honestly a relief. I mean, I know where they're going to end up. What makes this group so special and what I love about them and find inspiring about them is that this is not what they end up using as their final assessment. They don't make it about themselves or their failures. They make it about what they can do next. And they focus on living up to their own potential and trusting in the outcome. But it's really hard. I mean, it's it, like sort of it's easy to overlook because it's a show. But they're kids and even as an adult, you have this experience where you realize nothing is coming. No one is coming. There's no help arriving. And the temptation is to make it about you being a failure or something that is kind of this pervasive label that casts a shadow over everything you do and everything you can possibly do in the future. When really I think there's strength in kind of accepting the fact that the circumstances were out of your control, things were what they were, and they're not the perpetrators, they're reacting and doing their best in a terrible situation, and it's all about what happens next. But it's such a human response for them. They're just facing a total abyss and pit of despair because while they've been crushing it on their own and doing great things, they've always had kind of this layer of safety that is the older heroes, the pros, and that's just been gone. It's just been totally stripped from them. I hate to see my boy Mineta like that though. <laughs> Man, Deku's just something else right now. You cool off. The ice should help you rally. Damn, Endeavor and Todoroki fighting side by side. Elevate his leg. I'll make a tourniquet. I can just untangle this. Protect Aizawa at all costs. Deku, run. Not a chance. No way. But he's in danger to himself. He's a danger to himself right now. I don't even mean physically. I don't even going up against Shigaraki, which is also true. Uh, earlier, I couldn't use my quirks. So of course my body suffered as I pushed past my physical limits. This looks like heavy, heavily censored Shigaraki being split in half. He's like me. 
He's the vessel for a huge amount of power. That is a huge relief. Deku knows a lot about that. This is like somber piano music too. The seventh user's clerk. Float! He he just got it? It just unlocked for him. It's great timing. He just willed himself into knowing it. I Using wouldn't get too close though. Except for punching and kicking, that would, yeah, hold back on that, not the best idea. There's just so much going on right now. I was gonna say earlier, one thing that came up in the last episode that I thought was really interesting in hindsight and came up a lot in the comments was that Deku and Shigaraki sort of reversed roles a little bit. Deku was using rage as his fuel. I mean, he's, I think he said so explicitly. Shigaraki was using his his motivation, you know, his hero or villain ideal, focusing on his goal of becoming stronger. I've been wondering how intentional that was and also if it would have any longer implications because as I said last episode, I think Deku using rage or anger as his primary fuel seems incomplete to me in someone as good and transcendent as him. I feel like it's possible, though who knows, that there's a lesson coming for him in that. Not that his rage isn't fully understandable. I won't let you escape from here! My control's not the best, but I can get them out of the way. The world is hanging on by a thread right now, some kind of spirit thread. The number one hero should be fighting him, not this kid! I mean, whatever it takes. We can't bank on Eraser anymore! Who else is still able to face off against him in the air? Ooh, damn. I'll send your ass all the way up to heaven. I don't know, trust in Deku. Your little friends will be right behind. And then also back him up, please. Oh no, don't. Don't get close. Get in there. <laughs> you want us to help with your training? And flashback. And flashback, if there was any amount of disrespect in Bakugo left for Deku, that has to be gone now. There's no way. There's no way to see this and not be floored. You mean Black Whip? You're getting the hang of it. Also... What's going on with his hair? Yeah. About that, I thought you might have some guidance for me given your abilities. My ultimate goal is to be able to capture super fast targets. But why did he explode you? That was just for fun. But he doesn't stop. He's always jumping around. Yeah, he's a hopper for sure. Uraka definitely... Definitely coming into play later. Speaking of looks, I like this one for her. Float is a power that allows him to stop in midair. It's basically like zero gravity. If he can train for my master's quirk in advance, maybe it won't activate. That was some great and critical, critically important foresight there. Hey. What's Orca has his own brand deal. I don't think you'll be able to hide the truth much longer. This is totally different from when you just had super strength. Right. We'll ask questions. Yeah, I don't think that really matters now, though, in the perspective of what's going on. It doesn't matter. And Shigaraki already knows that's the greatest, the greatest threat. Why didn't you tell him more about the fourth user? We know how numbers five through seven died, but you avoided him. Why? Did you realize something you wanted to hide? Is one for all? I can't. Wait, what is going on? What is the deal with the fourth user? He doesn't think about himself. He never has. Even now. With everything he can do, that still hasn't changed. Who was it that was telling me that Bako actually hates Midoriya? As a kid, I didn't recognize my own weakness. Who is this? <laughs> Which is the reason you're always so quick to help him train. So you can make up for your actions in the past. Like a penance. I don't think he feels you have anything to atone for, though. He definitely doesn't. He just loves Bakugo. I'm sure you'll have another chance to talk things over with young Midoriya. Though... I'm not a great role model in that department. But he doesn't even have to talk it over. I mean, one, Midoriya knows. Or if he doesn't know, he doesn't care. Two, he's just doing everything. I mean, Bakugo's right there at his side. And this is the, the thickest of thick situations. That just speaks for itself. But I love that scene of Bakugo really opening up to All Might. All Might being father-like for him. But coming from Bakugo, that's such a huge sign of respect. Not that it wasn't obvious how much he respects All Might. Yes! I'm punching at 100% and he's still smiling. Although, his body's not healing as fast as it was. He's taking damage! So is Deku. Which means I'm the one who has to stop Shigaraki. Right here, right now! I do feel like he's a little bit blinded right now. Every ounce of strength in my body! No matter what happens to me! Wyoming! Ah! Oh, but every time he gets close. You are holding me back from my dream! That's exactly why I'm here! Oh, that was a such a clutch parry. You serious? Just a student? I mean, what are you guys doing? <laughs> like for real? I love you guys, but let's chit chat more. Getting up there and doing something. Soon his quirk is gonna be stolen from him, and it'll be nothing but dust. Todoroki, you done let's with the first aid? Let's go. What do you need? Shut up and grab a hold of me. There we go. Mako taking charge again. They're just children. You take care of things down here. All categories out the window. 
It doesn't matter. No, I can't think of him that way. After all, I recognized Deku as a hero a long time ago. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. All these categories, all these restraints just fall away in chaos. It's still our only hope. You can call me Deku, but I'm not the same. That's a defenseless kid crazy anymore. throwback right there. The notebook is going all the way back. From now on, Deku is He's just getting shredded up. There's no doubt. I mean, there's no doubt. You Snap out of it. They, it actually looks like they have a shot right now, which is insane. They could just turn the, the tide. Lend me your body. This guy always lurking, ready to take a pound of flesh from Shigaraki. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, what is happening? Oh no, this feels like self-sacrifice. Are you alright? Are you hurt? hurt? Tell me this isn't love. Tell me this isn't love right here. Just oh my god. Why do they keep doing this to me? Why? I'm sweating. This episode was just so much to take in. Starting off with the, sh the just shock of having Aizawa sever his own leg, which I actually think is a, is a great choice because Aizawa is still viable in terms of his power, but it still had the effect of having the most drama because he's incapacitated for this fight. So it's kind of best of both worlds. Then there's this thing that I, I don't fully understand. I feel like if I was paying more attention or watch the show in its entirety more recently, I would have more theories on it. But this thing Bakugo is hinting at about the cursed power, something about the fourth user and unlocking something that's potentially dangerous, that so dangerous or so unsettling that all my doesn't even want to talk about it. All Might not having the best track track record with filling the kids in on what's going on. Just adding to that legacy. That's really intriguing and troubling. But I mean, for me, far and above, best part of the episode. In second place is Deku being just absolute badass. Although not without some danger. Like I said, there's something about this that feels wrong to me. There's something about his blind rage and his, his self-sacrifice that is not him or not my full expectations of him, even though it's very realistic in the moment, even though I, I understand it. But at the same time, is also somewhat reminiscent of what I feel and have said, I think was one of the failings of All Might, thinking that he has to do everything alone and sort of crossing that line to the point where doing the right thing puts a little bit too much on his own shoulders and he starts breaking down which is what no one wants and is really not good for anyone though then again hard to argue with what he's done and hard to argue with the beauty of his willingness to sacrifice just like Deku it's just that Deku is, is so valuable he's worth so much more in his full potential combined with the fact that he seems to be acting kind of a blind range feels like there's something spiritual or symbolic missing from this this encounter for him that gives space for some growth in this saga but that's not even what i was referring to bakugo for me is the most moving part of this bakugo is, is such a well-written character just because there's so much brewing under the surface that you don't get to see i mean you get to see a lot of times what feels counter to what's actually going on which is that actually he, he's a deeply loving person I mean, he, he really adores people we've seen that with all might that was one of the best episodes for him was that confession of how much it means to him him opening up to all might here but that has been transferred to deku in a large way i mean i always knew that or i should say suspected that that was how bakugo felt but seeing it here in, in this poignancy to the extent that he's he just potentially sacrificed his life and his powers for Deku. It's incredibly moving to me as someone who's been following the series up to this point. Just implicit in that action, and this might not be meaningful for other characters, but it's definitely meaningful for Bakugo, is the implicit connotation that he recognizes Deku is more important than him. So that was just spectacular. Another thing of note, I guess, this episode is they specifically connected this to a, a bigger battle than Deku versus Shigaraki. This is legacy. This is a battle that's been raging for... I can't remember the time span on All for One and One for All and when they were born, the two brothers, but it's a long battle. It's been going on for generations, at least. This is an age-old conflict, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays a role, and if All for One starts to play an increasingly larger role as Shigaraki weakens or advances his power. And Deku has the same risk, apparently, or something similar that's lurking. That's not all him. There's more going on than just two people fighting. Overall, it was just a super thrilling episode. It felt like it was five minutes long.